Good evening. Welcome to worship at Augustana Lutheran Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Um, we have a couple of announcements this evening. Also welcome to any guests that might be joining us as well. Well, this Sunday is the Congregational Meeting Part 1, and that will be at 9.30 in between services. And there's more information about that in the bulletin. And then next Sunday, the 20th, that would be Pastor Dan's last Sunday here, um, one service at 9.30, and then following that there will be a celebration, a brunch, and program for Pastor Dan, and that'll begin approximately at 10.30. And we keep in our prayers Joe Erb, Dan Baker, and Don Paulson. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We join together in praying the prayer of the day found at the top of your bulletin insert. We pray together. O oh God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may live through what is temporary without, without losing what is eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And now we turn to the Word. Our first reading today is from Malachi. See, the day is coming, burning like an oven, when all the arrogant and all evildoers will be stubble. The day that comes shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts, so that it will leave them neither root nor branch. But for you who revere my name, the sun of righteousness shall rise with healing in its wings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Today's psalm is Psalm 98. Sing a new song to the Lord, who has done marvelous things, whose right hand and holy arm have won the victory. O Lord, you have made known your victory. You have revealed your righteousness in the sight of the nations. You remember your steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel. All the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song. With trumpets and the sound of the horn, shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea roar and all that fills it, the world and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord who comes to judge the earth. The Lord will judge the world with righteousness and the people with equity. The second reading is from two Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command, anyone willing, unwilling to work should not eat. For we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When some were speaking about the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and gifts dedicated to God, Jesus said, as for these things that you see, the days will come when not one stone will be left upon another. All will be thrown down. They asked him, Teacher, when will this be? And what will be the sign that this is about to take place? And he said, Beware that you are not led astray. For many will come in my name and say, I am he, and the time is near. Do not go after them. When you hear of wars and insurrections, do not be terrified, for these things must take place first, but the end will not follow immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be great earthquakes, and in various places famines and plagues, and there will be dreadful portents and great signs from heaven. But before all this occurs, they will arrest you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and prisons, and you will be brought before kings and governors because of my name. This will give you an opportunity to testify. So make up your minds not to prepare your defense in advance, for I will give you words and a wisdom that none of your opponents will be able to withstand or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, by relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but not a hair of your head will perish. By your endurance, you will gain your souls. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Is there anything good or hopeful in this reading? I have to admit that when I first saw it, I was discouraged. What kind of message do these words represent? So in following with my usual routine, I, I try to, as preparing for a sermon, I try to read the lessons on Sunday afternoon or Monday. 
Then I read some commentaries, and then by Tuesday afternoon or Wednesday, I'm ready for inspiration to strike. I rely very heavily on the Holy Spirit to send me something, a spark, a faint glimmer of an idea, a phrase, or a seemingly unrelated thought that then actually seems to be relevant to the text. Well, guess what? It happened again in the most least likely space I can think of during my water aerobics class at the Altoona campus. We were warming up, and someone in the class related their experience from the weekend about visiting a psychic. It was held at a restaurant bar, and tickets were sold for five minutes with the psychic. I forgot to ask how much the ticket cost. That would have been an interesting item to know. The woman from our exercise group got ticket number 44, and they were on ticket number 17 when she arrived. She ended up not staying for her turn with the psychic. Later on, someone told her that the final session happened around 10.30 that evening. Now, I'm not going to say anything one way or another about the idea of a psychic. I know that many times some psychics may know what to say based on careful observation of the person who wants the reading. But I also know that there are people who have unique abilities, and I don't want to make a judgment about how they would use their gift. What really struck me was that in our little town of Altoona, 50 people were interested enough to pay money to have five minutes with the person who was advertised as a psychic. What does that tell us about the state of our world today? Now, even if some of them were doing it on a lark, a bit of entertainment on a Friday night, that's still a lot of people who wanted to know about the future, about their own life, about a major decision, or where to find a long-lost relative, perhaps. I don't know what that conversation might look like or what the person might be seeking. But for me, this speaks to the general sense of anxiety that is out there in the world today. Of course, we could say the same thing about the state of mind of the people in the time of Jesus as well. There was anxiety perhaps on a different level than what we experience. Imagine when the people saw something change in the sky, a comet or a shooting star, unusual weather, how would they react? Today, we know what is happening or we can easily find the information to explain what had happened. But not so in the time of Jesus. Events in the heavens could not be explained. So people thought they could be omens, signs of bad things to come. Is the emperor sick? Are we soon to be attacked by an invading nation? Real news traveled very slowly, by messenger or word of mouth. It often arrived garbled or grossly exaggerated, so what began as the news that the emperor had a cold could morph into rumors of a fatal illness. Was the sighting of a shooting star an omen that an attack was imminent? Now, I'm sure these assumptions were based on previous experiences of cause and effect. It may have been a coincidence that soon after a meteor shower, there was an attack by an enemy. But no one would think it had just happened by accident, since there were no other explanations at the time for the presence of strange objects in the sky. Well, they must be a sign. And then there is that startling proclamation by Jesus that the temple would be destroyed. This is a stunning announcement. One commentator likened it to saying to an American that the White House, the Washington Monument, and the Statue of Liberty were going to be destroyed. So given the prevailing attitude about signs and omens, it's natural that the disciples ask Jesus, when will it happen and what does it mean? In Luke, Jesus has already talked about what is soon to happen to him. Three times he describes what will take place in Jerusalem. Then in chapter 19, he cleanses the temple, and soon afterwards, the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders question his authority. 
Immediately after the cleansing of the temple, we read that the leaders of the people were looking for a way to kill Jesus. If we are looking for a sign, a foretelling of things to come, this could be it. So what is Jesus saying when he declares that the temple will be destroyed? This is a statement beyond belief. For the Jewish people, the temple was not only a place of worship, it is central to their national identity, their religion, and their imagination. But for Jesus, it has come to represent the corruption of the religious leaders, whose behavior Jesus has called out from the beginning of his ministry. The message that Jesus brings, saying that God and Jesus himself can be worshipped anywhere, not just in the temple, goes against everything the people of Israel have believed up until this point. How dare Jesus say that he has replaced the temple? Additionally, it's not clear from these verses whether Jesus is speaking literally, although the temple was destroyed in 70 CE by the Roman army. Rather, the clear intention of this proclamation is to prepare the disciples and the rest of Jesus' followers for what is to come. Many will come and say that I am he, but don't follow them. Nations will rise against nations. Famines and plagues will come. You will be tested. But I am with you always. Now, one other lesson to be taken from this text, or rather not to be taken from this text and others like it, is that it is a roadmap or a timetable that reveals to us when and how the world will end. So let me quote from New Testament scholar Fred Craddock about this text. Those claiming the time is at hand fail to understand that calculations of calendar time, referred to as chronos time, do not lead one to know the fulfillment of God's time, often referred to as Kairos time. What is important to glean from this teaching is what we are called to do in the meantime. Here at Augustana, we are experiencing God's time, Kairos time. God has led and continues to lead this congregation through these times of transition. Times like these can be an opportunity to stop and listen, really listen, for God's call and direction for all of God's people. Now, we do not know the exact time or how things will end, and we can't know the future, no matter how many psychic readings we hear. But we do know, in all certainty, that in times of testing and in the midst of a chaotic and frightening world, God is with us. God holds our future. And for faithful people, that's enough. Thanks be to God. Amen.
We join together in the Apostles' Creed, found on page 127. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We now turn to the prayers of the people. The prayer response is, Lord, in your mercy, and you respond with, receive our prayer. United with your saints across time and place, we pray for our shared world. Reviving God, keep your church active in its mission and ministry. Encourage bishops, deacons, pastors, and lay leaders to risk boldly in their proclamation and fill them with wisdom and endurance for challenging times. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Renewing God, as the Northern Hemisphere prepares for winter, make us mindful of the ordered beauty of your creation. Teach us to treasure cycles of rest and a new life. Help us care for what you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, receive our prayer. Loving God, accompany all who make sacrifices for the sake of others. Safeguard first responders and active duty military personnel. Grant peace to veterans and heal any wounds in body, mind, or spirit. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Healing God, your people cry out to you. Sustain doctors, nurses, and hospital personnel in their tireless work. Uphold mental health professionals and those in their care. Make the sun of righteousness rise on all who are sick, especially Joe, Dan, Don, and all those we name in our hearts at this time. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Uniting God, unite this assembly in its shared mission and ministry for the sake of the gospel. Highlight ways we can better work together and give us patience to work through disagreement. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Consoling God, abide with all who grieve for loved ones who have died. Comfort us with the promise of resurrection and new life with you. Lord, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Accept these prayers, gracious God, and those known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who creates all things and calls them good, who makes us alive in Jesus, and who breathes on us the spirit of hope, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Go in peace, be a blessing in the world. Thanks be to God.